Today we're going to be giving you a walkthrough of our product at Jetpack Workflow and I'm really excited to dive right in. I personally have overseen the implementation of our software at over a thousand accounting firms and this presentation is based off of my experience with those accounting firms. So hopefully it kind of resonates for you as we move forward. With that said, let's move my face up here. It's a little bit better. There we are. Let's go. So why are you here? Well, this presentation is all about you and Jetpack Workflow is all about you. Maybe you're looking to grow your firm. And by the way, this list is populated with things that I've heard from other accounting firms. Maybe you're looking to add new employees or you need help managing everything or perhaps your firm needs more transparency over your workflow or even you've got to standardize your processes. This last one is my favorite. It's a bad case of the oh no's. If you've never heard of the oh no's, I guarantee you've experienced them. You kind of wake up in the middle of the night and you go, oh no, did I get that done for that client that I was supposed to get done? I hate that feeling. You might also have be looking for something called the balanced firm, which is that you have enough capacity to fulfill the demand, right? You've got enough resources to get all of those projects done for all those clients. Or you might even be thinking about eventually selling your business. I actually used to be a business broker uh, in upstate New York. And one thing that's universally true about trying to sell your business is that nobody wants to buy it if it's not organized, if you don't have procedures in place, if you don't have standardized processes. So if that's your eventual exit plan, you definitely want to be thinking about that. But perhaps those things that brought you here, they're not necessarily very painful, right? You, you're thinking about these things more intellectually. We want to make you feel a little bit more emotional about them. And maybe you've had something fall through the cracks because you're not as organized as you need to be or you're growing too fast. And this really kind of puts your reputation at risk. You know, it puts a pit in your stomach whenever you feel that or... Maybe you can't sleep at night because of those oh no's we talked about earlier and you're not really certain if your firm's on the right path because it's hard to know. You know, it, running a business is very difficult. You might be very concerned with your growth of your firm. You might be one of these people who's looking for a very high growth firm and honestly, who's not? But maybe you don't know if you have a growth machine. And what I mean by a growth machine is you put an X amount of dollars inside of marketing and that spits amount, a Y amount of customers, right? Do you have that type of clarity over your business processes? Or perhaps you're a little stressed because you don't have a handle on your business. You don't have traction or a grip on what's going on. You need to have a better understanding of that. Or just there might not be enough cash flow. Your margins might be very thin. Is the bottom line not enough? And this might be something that you feel very keenly because you're the owner of the firm or you're the manager of the firm and you feel very, very, very responsible for making sure payroll gets run. Your operational costs just might be too high. Well, that's where we love to help. Because you should concentrate on your workflow. You may not think about this, but your workflow is your product, okay? I'm going to say that again. You guys are not selling widgets. You're selling a service. And whenever you have a service, your work product is entirely dependent on your workflow, okay? What is the status of X? Who didn't come back this year? My clients don't, won't get me information in a timely manner. My prices are set by the market. These are all things that you might be saying right now. And that last one's a particular bugaboo of mine. I'm going to say a sentence, I'm going to let it hang it out there, and I want you to think about it. Then I'm going to say it again. Forgive me, it's a question. If you doubled your prices tomorrow, would half of your clients leave you? So again, I'm going to say that again. If you doubled your clients tomorrow, would half of your, price, would half of your clients leave you? And the answer is maybe. If the answer is yes, then maybe you should double your clients tomorrow because you'd have the same amount of revenue with half the amount of customers to serve. You can always increase your prices, 15, 20, 30 bucks, whatever it is, go ahead and do it. You can do it. But the answer to all these questions is having a better understanding of your workflow. It's making sure that you're getting more done with the people you have. It's not necessarily hiring new people to your firm. It's becoming more efficient. It's helping with those operational costs. It's making you more profitable. So let's talk about how Jetpack Workflow can help your firm. And we're going to jump right into the application right now. This is a, an instance of Jetpack Workflow. It's my personal one. There's dummy data inside of here. So if something looks odd, that's the only reason. What you're brought here to is this idea of the dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a quick tour of what each one of these little tabs means. And then I'm going to give you an overview of how you can use Jetpack Workflow. So this is your dashboard. Your dashboard's a quick pulse. Whenever you log into Jetpack, you're given this understanding of how many jobs are overdue, how many due today, how many you're due this week, and how many you're due next week. Now you see that word job, and you might not understand what it means, but a job is just a project. A job is anything a client will pay you to do. We call them jobs. Each and every job inside the system is actually broken up into tasks. These little tasks are steps within the job. 
right? So if you have a 1040, if you have a tax, you know, if you have a VAT return, whatever it is, those individual little steps are tasks inside of our program. So you can see this great overview of what's happening over the next two weeks here. You can also see recently completed jobs on the right. Any labels, these labels are custom statuses inside the application. You can set these for your entire firm. What the status of any particular job is, so you can see which jobs are pending, meaning you've yet to begin work, as well as which jobs are in progress. Then down here below, we've got a team capacity section where if you allocate hours to the jobs inside the software, they'll get aggregated down here below. From the dashboard, we're going to skip over the jobs tab. We're going to go to the calendar. The calendar is exactly what it sounds like, folks. It's a calendar. Uh, up here in the top right, you're going to see we're looking at jobs, tasks, and my Google calendar. We're going to give this a second to load. You're going to see my Google calendar is going to be in blue. I'm going to immediately remove that from view, and then I'm also going to remove the tasks from view by clicking there. We're going to give this a second to load too. But once this loads back up, when these are removed from view, you're going to be able to see every job on the day that it's due and you can see who it's responsible for because you can color code the calendar. If you hover over any one of these jobs, you'll be able to go directly to that job. And we're going to do that right now. We're just going to click that job, it's hyperlinked, it brings you right to it. And once you're there, you'll be able to see the area we call the job profile screen. Here you can get more information about the job and the client. On the right, you can see any notes that were particularly added. And if we scroll down, you can see that list of tasks. These are the little discrete steps that you need to get done in order to complete anything. Now, that's again just an overview of the calendar, folks. The calendar is not probably where we're going to be spending a lot of the time, so we're going to skip over here to the Clients tab. And guess what you see on the Clients tab? That's right, you see the clients. Your clients are, again, the lifeblood of your business, right? So here, if I remove, looks like I had somebody searched here previously. If I remove those from view, you can see all of my clients inside of the program right here. And if I wanted to, I could search for a particular client, for example, ABC Markets, hit enter on my key board and I'll be brought to an area called the client profile screen. Here on the client profile screen I'd see more information about the client on the left hand side and I'd be able to see any ongoing projects I have for that particular client right here on the right hand side. It's a great way where if a client calls you up you just go to the clients tab, search their name, you get an instant update. Oh okay what projects do we have outstanding? Maybe if you have emails that you you know sent to them you can see that there or if you have any notes you can add them in the activity section as well as any special instructions you have for that particular client you can put here in the client profile screen. From there we've got an area called the reports. Reports is exactly what it sounds like folks. The first thing I'm going to show you though is the thing that it lands on is this progress report and the progress report basically tells you exactly how you're doing so far. If you select a time frame for, uh, we're going to select this month, for example, you can see how far along in the month you are on the first bar. The second bar is how many jobs are to be completed within that time frame. It looks like we've got some work to catch up on. And down here are the tasks that make up those jobs. Again, this is just meant to answer, are we on track? Are we trying to get done what we need to get done? There's some other reports to talk about, but we're not going to go there. For right now, we're going to go back here to the Jobs tab. And the Jobs tab is the most important tab, so we're going to slow down a bit, and we're going to spend more time here after that quick tour. But the thing we were talking about earlier is helping you to get better transparency over your workflow and keeping the oh no's from ever happening to you, because we can keep anything from falling through the cracks by helping you get organized and helping you to automate the generation of jobs inside of our software. So you no longer have to remember what to do or keep track of it every single month. Instead, you just log into the software and it tells you exactly what you should be doing. This here is the jobs tab and you may notice it looks like an Excel spreadsheet. We do that on purpose. You can come here and when you're here you can see there's columns and there's rows, right? The rows are individual jobs, the columns are the attributes for each one of those jobs. At any time you can click into any one of these. So for example, if we wanted to click into this bi-weekly payroll job, we'd be brought to that same client, for me, that same job profile screen we were talking about earlier from the calendar page where you can see we've got some labels here, we're waiting on client, you can also see here that we've got some notes that we've added in as well, and we've checked off a few of the tasks. So we know we've got more tasks to check off, but if we look at any of the checked off tasks, you can see who completed what and when, right? So this might give you a little bit of an overview of what it looks like as a source of record inside of Jetpack Workflow. The idea is you go to Jetpack and you can see what anybody's done on any project for any client at any time. This is part of transparency over your workflow because you can come here, you can click in any project and you can know what is so-and-so done on this bookkeeping for that particular client.
But again, here in the Jobs tab, we've got columns, we've got rows. We've also got this drop down here called the filters. The filters are a great way for getting what we call instant reports. So what you could do here if you wanted to is you could say, you know what, I wanna focus on my good friend, Angela Martin. I wanna make sure that Angela's getting everything done that we need to get done. So I'm gonna select Angela's name from the drop down, and you're gonna see the list react where it's gonna show us only those jobs where Angela's working. As you can see here, these are all the jobs where Angela has something to do. Not only that, let's say we wanted to narrow it down to only those jobs perhaps that are due this month. We can use a filter here. Just like in Excel, you can filter down this list to show you specifically only those jobs that are due this month. And you can see at any given time, these are the ones we want to concentrate on. If we wanted to, we could get even more specific by typing in a client's name. So if we say, let's say Anderson here, Oop, Anderson, there we are and we hit enter on our keyboard, then again, you're gonna see the list react and it's gonna show us the one job that's for that one client that's due this month that is assigned to Angela Martin, right? Or instead of typing in a client name, maybe we might wanna type in, oh, I don't know, let's say biweekly payroll, right? So if we type in the words biweekly payroll, once this loads up, then you can pull up a list of all of those biweekly payroll jobs, which are assigned to Angela Martin and which are due this month in some time frame. And again, folks, this is that transparency over workflow because you can pull up this list at any given time and you can click into any one of these jobs and you can know which ones are pending, meaning you've yet to begin work and which ones are in progress. And you can be updated of what's going on. Now, this keeps you from ever thinking, oh, what needs to be done? or what should I do next? Because you can log into the program and you can see exactly what needs to be done at any given time. You can do it and check it off in order to store that it has been checked off. So that's the first way we're gonna help you out here is we're gonna make sure that we are keeping things from falling through the cracks. The second way we're gonna help you out is by doing something called never, well, forgive me. We just showed you how to get workflow transparency. We wanna show you how to get things to keep from, from falling through the cracks. And where we're gonna do that is, I'm just gonna type in the word example repeat here. And I'll show you, we've already got some jobs set up here, but these are repeating jobs. So inside of our software, we can make a job repeat. And the way it repeats is either you complete it before the due date or you don't. So if you'll notice, this job has not been completed and the due date has passed. So then the software created this job, which has not been completed and the due date has passed. So then it got us up to date with this job this month. But Let's say we don't complete this job this month, that's okay, it's gonna automatically create the next month for us. So if we don't get things done on time, it's still gonna generate the jobs for us to ensure that we're getting done on time. Or let's say we don't get something done on time, let's say we, or forgive me, let's say we actually do get something done on time. Let's say we complete this before the due date, just by checking that off, you can quickly complete the job and you're gonna see the software is gonna automatically create another one for us, but the due date is gonna be in April once it loads back up. The point here, folks, is either you get something done on time or you don't. In either case, the software automatically and immediately creates the next job for you so that you can never have something fall through the cracks again, okay? So those are generally the two things that people were concerned about. One thing I'll show you that is really awesome is this My Work tab. We love the My Work tab. This is amazing, especially if you work uh, with multiple people on your team because you can just, any one of your persons on your team can just come here to the My Work tab and it's an instant list of all the tasks where they're up next. So this becomes a list of all the projects where they're the blocker and they know immediately what they should be working on. There's no guesswork needed. They can literally just log in and know exactly what they need to work on next. They can even open up these jobs in separate tabs as well. So from there, folks, we're gonna go back here and we're just gonna talk about our pricing and then we're gonna say adieu. So pricing and onboarding, how much would you guess Jetpack workflow is? It's not three grand per year, it's not 1500, it's not any of these. It's literally a dollar a day, folks. It's 360 per year, okay? $360 per year, okay? We also do offer you paid onboarding options if you like. We do have a done for you package, which literally means you log in after we've set up everything for you and it's $13.99 or we do have a Kickstarter package, which is $2.99. From there, folks, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. This is us, we're all located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I appreciate your attention. Thank you for looking over the program and hopefully we get to talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.